Throughout history, when people wanted to deliver a harsh threat to their mortal enemies, a common phrase would be, I will knock your skull off and use it as a bowl. Especially on the battlefield, this phrase expressed contempt and ridicule toward the enemy. But is using a skull as a bowl merely an insult, or does it have historical precedent? Whose skulls were actually used as bowls in history? The world's earliest skull cup was discovered in England, dating back to 14,700 years ago. This cultural phenomenon, found across the Eurasian continent, frequently appears in ancient Eurasian historical records. For the nomadic Scythians, known for their primitive abundance, the custom of drinking from skull cups was a notable practice. According to their traditions, these nomadic warriors would turn the skins of beheaded enemies into headbands or coverings for quivers and transform the skulls of high-ranking individuals into drinking vessels. At gatherings, only Scythians with a record of killing enemies could drink, while those without such achievements had to sit quietly in humiliation. Wealthy nobles would even gild or silver plate these skull cups to showcase their status. By the end of the Roman Republic, after Crassus was defeated in his expedition against Parthia, he was executed by the Parthians, who poured molten gold down his throat as a form of punishment. Considering the deep historical connections between the Parthians and the Scythians, both part of the broader Scythian cultural sphere, it's likely that the treatment Crassus received had ties to the Scythian tradition of beheading and using skulls as vessels. In the 5th century BC, during a tumultuous period of intense conflict in ancient China, the states of Han, Zhao, and Wei emerged victorious over the Ji family during the civil war in the Jin state. Out of spite, Zhao Xiangzi made a drinking vessel or urinal from the skull of Ji Bo. In the eastern Eurasian steppes, the Xiongnu, who also had a strong nomadic tradition, practiced similar customs. For instance, they had a tradition of rewarding warriors with a cup of wine for each enemy head taken, reminiscent of the Scythians described by Herodotus. After defeating the Yueji, the Xiongnu made a rough skull cup from the head of the Yueji king. During the reign of Emperor Yuan of Han, when Hu Han Ye Chanyu of the Xiongnu formed an alliance with the Han envoy, he brought out this ancestral treasure and used it in a ritual to seal the alliance by sacrificing a white horse. As history entered the medieval period, Europe continued to be haunted by grisly tales of skull cups. For example, after the Lombard king Alboin defeated the Gepids, he killed their king, Cunamund, and forcibly married his daughter, Rosamund. Alboin then made a drinking cup from Cunamund's skull. In 972 AD, Sviatoslav of Kiev besieged Constantinople, but was forced to retreat to the Dnieper River, where he was ambushed by Pecheneg Khan Kurya. Sviatoslav was killed in battle, and according to the asterisk primary chronicle asterisk, his skull was turned into a gold and silver adorned drinking cup as punishment for his relentless warmongering. In Eastern Europe, the Bulgarians, who were also deeply influenced by nomadic cultural traditions, practiced similar customs. During the First Bulgarian Empire, Khan Krum killed Byzantine Emperor Nikephoros I at the Battle of Pliska and made a drinking cup from his skull. After the Fourth Crusade, the Latin Empire faced continuous revolts from Greeks within its territories, making it a fragile state that soon came under attack from the nearby Bulgarian Empire. After Tsar Kaloyan of Bulgaria defeated Emperor Baldwin I of Constantinople, Baldwin was held captive for a time. It is said that during his imprisonment, he attempted to seduce the Tsar's wife. As a result, Baldwin's skull was fashioned into a drinking vessel by the Bulgarians, who reveled in this macabre tradition. In medieval Asia, besides Shibani Khan, who was defeated by the Persians and whose skull was made into a drinking vessel, the last known skull cup on the Eurasian continent emerged in the 19th century. In 1847, the last Khan of the Kazakh Khanate, Kenesari Khan, was defeated by the coalition forces of Tsarist Russia, the Lesser Jews, and the Kyrgyz. The Kyrgyz beheaded the Khan and sent his head to the Russian Tsar, 
who then made the skull into an ashtray. This artifact is still kept in the Russian State Museum and is regarded by the Kazakhs as a national humiliation. In the distant Japanese Sengoku period, the heads of Asakura Yoshikage, Asai Hisamasa, and Asai Nagamasa, who were defeated by Oda Nobunaga, were made into gilded drinking cups, a unique instance. In Chinese history, the last relatively famous skull cup belonged to Emperor Li Zong of the Song Dynasty. After the fall of the Song Dynasty, during the Yuan Dynasty, a Tibetan Buddhist monk looted the Southern Song tombs and found Emperor Li Zong's body well preserved. He hung the body upside down on a tree for three days to drain the mercury and then, according to Tibetan Buddhist customs, presented Emperor Li Zong's skull to the imperial preceptor Fagpa as a skull cup. After reviewing so many cases, it's evident that the Celts, Rus, and even the early Anglo-Saxons have documented or archaeological evidence of making skull cups. However, the Vikings, often depicted in movies and games as fond of making drinking cups from their enemies' skulls, lack any archaeological or material evidence to support this claim. This stereotype likely originated from a translation error. Around the 17th century, a misunderstanding in translation led to the Norse word for drinking bowl, skal, being mistakenly translated into Latin as skull. This translation error has perpetuated the stereotype of the Vikings using skull cups. Overall, the practice of using skull cups is closely associated with the nomadic cultures of the ancient Eurasian steppes. Many of the groups that appeared during the Classical Era and the Middle Ages either originated from the steppes or were situated on the periphery of the steppe world. However, there are also relatively isolated cases, such as medieval Japan. So, the next time you see Vikings using skulls as drinking cups in movies or TV shows, give it a smile and remember that it might just be a historical misconception. While using skulls as bowls does have its roots in various cultures, these horrifying customs remind us that history is not only about glorious victories and great achievements, but also about the darkness and brutality of human nature. Each skull cup carries with it a story woven with blood and tears. They are not only symbols of power, but also the ultimate expressions of contempt for the enemy and the declaration of victory. In modern society, we no longer need such extreme methods to express our triumphs or anger. However, Understanding the motives and emotions behind these historical practices can help us appreciate peace and humanity more deeply, fostering a more just and compassionate future. If you enjoyed my content, please subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.